Let's look at how to pick a lineup for your match and create a game plan to get your team playing how you want. We'll also briefly look at match tactic cards and watching matches. The lineup drawer lists your players. Players already in the lineup have an S icon and players on the bench have a B icon. To pick a player, drag them into the lineup and then release. Players can also be swapped around on the pitch. The captain and the kicker are selected in the same way. By clicking on the pencil icon, it is possible to name the lineup or set it as your default. The easiest way to pick players is to select the player with the highest positional level for each position, but this is not always the best way. A player's positional level is only a guide to selection, and sometimes selecting a player out of position or of a lower level may be better, either due to form or health concerns, or because another player brings something extra to that position. For example, playing a lock in the back row to boost the team's line-out options, or a winger at the outside center to increase chances of an outside line break. A club starts with some pre-made game plans. These can be used as they are, or can be tweaked. You can also create new game plans from scratch. Clicking the pencil icon allows the current game plan to be named and designated as the club's default. For tactical game planning, the pitch is divided into four zones. On the right are the available zoned options, and on the left are the available general options, which are used regardless of what zone the ball is currently in. We'll go through all the available options, starting with the general ones. The first option sets direction and depth of kickoffs. Add or remove options and then set the percentage chance of each being used. The next option determines how the team lines up when receiving a kickoff. Standard lines your forwards opposite to the opponent's forwards, while balance spreads the forwards across the pitch. The third option sets how often drop goals are attempted when the field position allows. Set the slider to the desired level. The final option sets the team's mentality towards league bonus points. Caution needs to be taken here, as two of the options can lead to a team continuing to play, even when they have the opportunity to end the match by kicking the ball out of play. Let's move on to zoned options. Set the percentage chance the team will kick the ball when it has possession. Also set the percentage chance of each kick type being used if the team does kick. Attack patterns shape how a team uses their possession. There's no limit to the number of attack patterns that can be created. Set the percentage chance of each being used when the team has possession, though often a single attack pattern will be sufficient. Click on an attack pattern to see the attack plays that will be used. An attack play is a specific type of attack that will be used. Attack patterns can be ordered, where each play is used in an order you set, or weighted, where a percentage chance is set for each play to be used. See the wiki for details on each type. Ruck commitment determines how heavily the side contests rucks. It can be set at low, medium, or high, for a separate setting for defending or attacking the ruck. The higher your commitment level, the more your team will commit players to the ruck, which increases chances of success in the ruck, but can lead to fewer players in the defensive line. Pick from one of three defensive types, each with strengths and weaknesses. See the wiki for more detailed information about all three. Set the percentage chance of each penalty option being used when awarded a penalty in that zone. Regardless of percentage chosen for kicking for goal, a side will not attempt such a kick if it lies outside the range of the kicker. Set the percentage chance of throws to different targets in the lineup. Short and medium throws are to locks, and long throws are to a back row forward, normally the best jumper of the three. A drop throw is to the prop right at the front of the line and an overthrow is beyond the lineout itself, aiming for the last man in the lineout to run back and catch. Click on an upcoming fixture on the comps fixture page to bring up a panel allowing the lineup and game plan to be set for that match. If not set, then the current default lineup and game plan are used. This panel is also where you can play match tactic cards. The number of slots is determined by tick upgrades in the stadium building. Each tactic card played gives a bonus to an aspect of the match based upon the card's type and its energy value. Playing multiple cards of the same type will result in diminishing returns, with each additional card's effectiveness being halved. Each card also has a focus, either league, cup, or ladder, 
and if it matches the fixture type being played, the card receives a synergy bonus, increasing its effect by times 1.5. If a match is currently being played, a live icon shows above the stadium, which will take you to the match in the 3D viewer. The Fixtures tab also allows live matches to be watched, as well as replays of completed matches. After a match concludes, you can view the timeline, match stats, and player stats. Completed matches provide a variety of rewards, from tokens to club XP, which are claimed in the fixture panel. Future matches can also be examined, showing default lineups of both sides and the weather forecast. Finally, let's talk about Fog of Score. This fog hides the result of matches until you're ready to reveal them. This allows replays to be watched without spoiling the result. You can turn off Fogger Score anytime in the settings.